Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho, this is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, where we talk about role-playing games! Uh, welcome to the second season of the Dr. Tom the Frog Show. Uh, first season, we had 40 amazing episodes, and we're going to kick off the second season pretty excitingly. First, I just want to, to again remind you of uh, the the amazing Frog Paladin picture by Juana Choa, which we use as our backdrop here uh, for this episode. And uh, we have a cool new... Uh, so Alex Prinz uh, gave me a new logo there, so I'm pretty excited about that, too. Uh, so, enough about me. Let's talk to our guest. We have uh, a game designer who, who's got quite a few products that we'll talk about today. Is James Mendez Holtz. How are you doing, James? I'm well. It's good to see you, man. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, well, now, uh, James, or, or actually, can I call you JMH? JMH, that sounds awesomer. Uh, yeah, sure, go with that. Awesome. So, JMH, I hear that you're part of a Kickstarter for a role-playing game called Iron Claw that, that is some kind of anthropomorphic animals as player characters, and you know, I'm, I'm totally into that. Yes, uh, yes. Um, it, it might be a little bit less exciting for you than for, for some other people, but yes, um, Iron Claw is a game about... Um, uh, fan anthropomorphic animals in a fantasy version of the 1600s, among other centuries. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, it's a lot of fun. There are uh, European and Chinese settings already, and uh, my Kickstarter uh, is for the Book of Horn and Ivory, which brings in an African uh, setting um, that focuses on uh, uh, Africa and the Near East. Uh, now, it's called The Horn of the Ivory. Mm -hmm. There's a distinct lack of frog parts in that name. So um, what's the deal? Um, so most of the player characters are uh, birds or mammals. Um, uh, reptiles tend to be actually beasts of burden in this game. So um, What? Yes. So um, so instead of, having, uh, instead of having a human riding around on a horse, you'll have a horse riding around on a velociraptor. Um, and amphibians are are very rare, um, but uh, they uh, they appear as player characters primarily in the uh, Chinese setting. Um, although they're actually uh, the subject of a great deal of prejudice and racism um, coming from the uh, more dominant mammal and uh, avian populations, um, they uh, they also appear in the African setting in uh, the Book of Horn and Ivory. Um, but they do not face, uh, they're not quite as common, but they also do not face the same kind of prejudices uh, because of the cultural context uh, in which they are. Oh, okay. You, you've you redeemed yourself in this in this uh, endeavor here by, I, I like, I might, I don't mind being rare. That's okay. <laughs> yes. That's cool. So so what's really cool, what's the most coolest thing about making this, this setting for you, uh, JMH? Uh, well, uh, this is the first and only a book that I've been able to find or think of um, that talks about um, some of the subjects that we're going into, uh, specifically um, North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa and the Ottoman Empire um, in the 1500s and 1600s. Um, it's a it's a really uh, fun time in history uh, because you've got a lot of uh, piracy uh, on the Mediterranean um, and you have some pretty exciting uh, military uh, developments, um, uh, the Ottoman Empire bringing in these gigantic cannons, and uh, the Oyo Empire in uh, uh, Western Africa, in uh, sort of Yoruba land, um, expanding with its uh, mighty cavalry. Um, so these are really exciting, but there aren't any game settings about them yet. Um, and Iron Claw is a uh, is a fantasy game, so it's not it's not real Yoruba land or real Ottoman Empire. Um, but a lot of the cultural signifiers are definitely there, um, and you're going to get uh, you're going to get that flavor very strongly uh, in this game. So I'm really excited to be uh, representing uh, time and place in history, which there just aren't enough role playing games about. Oh, cool! So you're telling me that it's about the Ottoman Empire, uh, but not about the Ottoman Empire because you can play a frog. I, I can live with that. That's that's cool. Pretty much, yes. Um, yeah, so you could be you could be an Ottoman supahi, but uh, an Ottoman supahi who happens to be a frog. If you're into that kind of thing, I'm, I'm um, totally going to Google supahi later. Uh, it's it's like a it's like a it's like a Turkish knight. Um, and again, in this game, since horses are uh, horses are player characters, you'd be riding a velociraptor or a pterodactyl around. Wow. Okay. 
Yeah, so this is on Kickstarter now. If yes. uh, if you want to play frogs riding velociraptors, which I don't blame you, uh, you should check it out. But hey, JMH, uh, my crack research team, uh, they have found out you're you're heavily in development for a game called, uh, it's exciting, it's called Afro Future. Now yes. I have to say, uh, I'm on tenterhooks here with excitement over the future of Afros. Now being a frog, hairstyles are always so fascinating to me. So tell me, is there some kind of follicle related resolution system here? Um, unfortunately, it's, it's not follicle related, um, which is both an advantage or a disadvantage. Um, it, you would definitely, a, as a frog without hairs, you would not be at a disadvantage. This game would not uh, discriminate against you for that. Um, the uh, resolution system is actually based on Blackjack. B black Blackjack? Huh. Yeah. That's a card game, right? Indeed. Nice. Um, so uh, that's the, the, you get to the 21 and you have the, the betting with lots of chips. Is that is that how it goes? Like you're betting on your Afro future? Uh, a little bit. Um, so the so the game is about... Um, is about an uh, interdimensional struggle across space and time against the man. Um, the man is a mystical evil force um, who is responsible for uh, the spread of racism, ableism, uh, misogyny, um, all kinds of uh, all kinds of systemic oppression. Uh, and the man's influence is trying to shepherd all of human history towards. Um, uh, towards a future of uh, similarity and sameness and oppression, where everything's just kind of beige, the color of an IBM from like the mid '80s, and everything's boring and similar. Um, and uh, acting against the man is Afro Future. Um, Afro Future is um, uh, based out of the mothership. Uh, the mothership is uh, sort of part space plane, part plane of existence. It's an interdimensional funk machine. Uh, from which the Psycho Alpha Disco Beta Eldernauts uh, deploy uh, the Afro Future operatives uh, to fight back against the man uh, using the power of funk. Oh, 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 wow. I, I really wish we had the budget to have my head explode right now because that's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you like it. As, as, um, as, so, yeah. So, so how, do I, how, how, do, how do people play this game? Um, so uh, character creation is uh, is pretty simple. You're allowed to play any character as long as there's a song about them in the real world. Gah. So um, uh, in I'm order, I'm gonna play to, Jeremiah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, that that counts. All technicalities count. Um, so so yes. Um, in order to be an operative of Afro Future, you need to become uh, you need to be a culture hero. And the proof that you are a culture hero is that there is a song about you in real life. Um, so the characters that I bring to uh, the characters that I bring to conventions include uh, John Henry, uh, Hua Mulan. Um, let's see, uh, Ziggy Stardust is a possible is a popular choice. Um, uh, Jeremiah would be a very good choice for this, also. Oh, I've got tingles here. Okay, okay, this is this is amazing. All right, this leads perfectly to our serious question, JMH. Are you ready for a serious question now? I am. I was told I needed a serious hat, um, and I, I don't have one really serious hat, so I'm going to put on three um, smaller hats. Uh, so I'm going to look kind of like that, kind of like that book, Caps for Sale. Oh man! So you know, just warn me if any monkeys are sneaking up on me. <laughs> that that's very serious. Okay, all right. Here we go. This is a serious question now. If you are the soundtrack of a revolution, JMH, what is your song? What is my song if I am the soundtrack of the revolution? Um, I'd say Many Moons by Janelle Monae, um, which is the song about uh, a revo an android revolution uh, in uh, Fritz Lang's Metropolis. Um, it's one of my favorite songs, and... Uh, I've also been uh, I've also bringing been bringing Janelle Monae's uh, android character uh, Cindy Mayweather as an Afro future character to conventions. So she's one of my favorite characters to to um, field in Afro future as well. Uh, so JMH, really appreciate it, and uh, thank you so much for coming on the Dr. Tom the Frog show to to talk about your wares, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for thank you for having me. You just watch the Dr. Tom the Frog show. And we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime. <laughs>